We're here to empower high income earners to gain back control of your time through financial independence and stop trading your time for money and start letting your money work harder for you. And hey, if you want to meet other high income earners on their FIRE journey, join our High Income Earners FIRE Facebook group. Every month we'll have guest speakers and we'll share about what our team is currently working on and allow you to share what you are working on with other high income earners. Welcome, everyone. This is the High Income Earners Fire podcast. I'm your host, Eileen Prack. I'm here with our co-host, Cody Ye, and we have our guest here, Derek Peterson, and he is the founder of Adapt You and Adapt Media, and he's committed to helping people and businesses execute the change they are needed to grow and thrive. And he first started his business as an entrepreneur when he was back when he was 13 years old, basically to provide lawn care for his clients. And he ended up getting over 35 clients that year at the age of 13. And then since then, he also founded and ran three successful organizations in the medical field and has scaled his national sales team to over 2,500 people. So he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to pass, creating passive income for yourself. And, you know, he's just a great person, a wealth of knowledge. So welcome to the show, Derek. Thank you. I really appreciate you uh, having me on, Eileen Cody. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. So Derek, let's start off by sharing with us just a little bit more about your background and then also the three main vehicles that you're utilizing right now to help you get to achieve fire. Yeah. So a little bit about, about myself. So I, I was actually spent most of my life and you know, growing up in my younger years in upstate New York. So I guess by heart and by trade, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker. And, and I only bring that up because I think that served me well as I moved to the South in terms of having somewhat of that mindset, maybe I'm biased, uh, that bit of that New Yorker mindset that gives us you know, a little bit of the edge to be able to handle challenging situations that may come up in life, but also in business. And about six years ago, I decided to move south here to warmer weather, and I'm in the Carolinas. And over the years, I was a graduate from Siena College with a marketing and management degree, which 20, what is that, five years ago, maybe longer, gosh, I'm getting old, was you know marketing and management as it was then. I just took it in college because I was like, Everyone said it was easy, right? It was a chip shot. Let's be honest. That's that's why I took it. Really? And wow. yeah. And then lo and behold, that's actually what I do for a living. So, and the things that were taught to me as marketing and management, then the tools and the systems are not anything like they exist today. I mean, I didn't even have a computer in college. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> so, so now obviously things have drastically changed as it comes to marketing and management. And over the years, I wore different hats for corporate organizations, working and selling software to selling medical devices. I sold human tissue at one point, uh, devices, staplers used for gastric bypass, weight loss surgery. And the one thing that I found was no matter what the product was, whatever the widget was, I enjoyed the process of marketing it and of building sales systems and getting it out there and seeing the results. So building these systems, selling a product, and then being rewarded for that. And that's always been what I've done for a career. I'm a person who is, who's always sold things. Also a firm believer that in nearly every interaction in life, you're either selling something or you're being sold something. Every interaction. I'm selling that, that fact right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it's something that after I exited the corporate America days and decided, Hey, you know what, I'm going to strap on my boots and try to do this myself. I went into the medical distribution space, scaled several large teams there because I did that in the corporate world. So kind of knew what I was doing, had some relationships and did real well with that. But then I realized that, you know, I really don't like the medical space, not really I want to spend my life. And as I was got older, I realized I wanted to align with something that was a passion for me. So chase my passion versus my pension and well, ideally doing them both. Right. So I uh, decided to open a marketing firm. I've always enjoyed marketing. I've always enjoyed everything sort of came full circle, didn't it? Right. So from college thinking it was a, a fluff class to now is opening a marketing firm. And I wanted to help other businesses create their systems, sell their widgets, so to speak, and partner with them to do that. And we started Adapt Media Agency and several other companies, which we can get into under the Adapt brand, because I believe in the word adapt and I believe in the concept of change and that the only constant in life is change. If you get really good at it, whether it's business, love, relationships, anything, your fitness, your health, you got to challenge yourself and you have to get used to the idea of changing and adapting. But I've, I've made that really part of 
the branding of, of what I do for a career to where I am today with this marketing agency and subsequently here talking to you two wonderful people. Fantastic. And so, you know, all of the th things that you've talked about right now has you've been working very actively to, you know, pursue and get those, that active income. And so after creating these businesses, establishing these relationships, you know, what did you do with the income afterwards to continue to grow it? Um, that has helped you to get to where you are today. Yeah. So that's a great question because as we all kind of go through the evolution of life and start to realize we're trading at time for money, you know, we, we all have that epiphany or hopefully maybe those who are listening right now are having that epiphany because I know that's a lot of what your podcast is about and what a service it is to the world because we all get to this point where we realize I have to work harder and put more hours in to get more money. And then you realize, well, wait a second. No, you don't. There are vehicles out there and there are ways to be able to not only earn income passively, right? With different systems you can create. And that's been a huge focus of my life for the last two years. I can absolutely dive into that. And, and it's not so much on the investment side, but also on the investment side. So investments are obviously the logical place that I've tried to take the income that I've earned, the time that I've traded for that money and put them into those vehicles to be able to generate that type of passive income. And specifically, we'll talk about that for a minute. I've spent quite a bit of time working with syndicators over the last three, four years as a, as a marketer. And I've learned a lot about the syndication business and have then subsequently invested in real estate, multifamily syndication, commercial retail, and I've had great success over these last you know, several years. And that's been a big vehicle for myself and my family. My wife has apartments uh, now. They're smaller, you know, just kind of like three family, five family, things like that, that we have on our own. Quite honestly, a bit of a nuisance. I like the syndication model a little bit better. So that's been good. Crypto has been a secret crush for me for quite some time. I'm just mesmerized by it. Done really, really well with it as well. Well, with the exception of maybe the last couple of months, it hasn't been so hot, but up to that point, done really well and, and just immerse myself into that universe. Those have probably been some of the two big ones and specifically in crypto, doing crypto staking, uh, which is a great way to increase that passive income over time. And I've also done some yield farming and a few other strategies as it relates to developing streams of passive income in the crypto space. That's been great as well. So investment wise, and then obviously the market has, you know, some of the equities done well there with, you know, good dividend yields, things like that. Um, those collectively make up the majority of my investment portfolio right now. I've been heavily leaning towards crypto though with these last couple of months because everything's on sale. Eric, I know you touch on a lot of great stuff, some active, some more passive. You have your own system, your marketing agency, help a other syndicator. You also do syndication yourself for multifamily. And then you said recently you're more into crypto and you have some equity that generates dividend. So you might have asked you, like, what's kind of your percentage, your portfolio in terms of your wealth? You don't have to give me exact number, but what's a roughly a percentage you put in each bucket? Yeah. So I would say up until recently, up until about a year ago, because crypto, I've, I've quite honestly only been in for about 12 to 18 months. Uh, and so prior to that, it was, it was a pretty even split 50-50 right? So equities to multifamily. So, and then sort of pulled back a little bit out of the equity side, the market side, and I've taken a good portion of that and reinvested it into crypto. And then any income that I've earned, um, you know, through the businesses uh, have also gone towards crypto as well. Um, so I'd say, gosh, I haven't actually sat down and actually looked at the ratio, but I'd say it's probably very close to a third, a third and a third right now. Um, and I'm pretty comfortable with that, at, you know, right now I was really, really big into crypto for quite some time, but with some of this new legislation coming down the pipeline that was just announced and a lot of things that are happening globally, um, it's got me a little scared about it. So I'll probably be a little bit more conservative in that arena for a little bit. That actually was a great segue because I had a quick question about that too, because what are some of the indicators that you measure and that you evaluate that determine what percentage you're going to shift your buckets around it? And like, what are some of the things that you look at that indicate 
let me pull out a little bit more from crypto. Let me invest in this other asset class and redistribute where my investments are. So a lot of it comes from the community of people that I try to surround myself with in sort of the investment space. So it's not one particular individual. We have something called Adapt Wealth, which is a community of investors that are very like-minded that like to invest across all asset classes. So I actually lean into those folks to ask them questions, run things off them to try to understand where the market is. Because, you know, if I go to my crypto guy, no matter whether it's up or it's down, I'm going to be like, no, crypto is the future. It's the only place to invest. Everything else is terrible, right? I talk to my syndicator friends. It's like, oh, syndication all the time. So it's got a little bit of a bias to it, right? And obviously my broker is going to be like, nope, stocks, stocks, it's been there, S&P all day long. So got a little frustrated with that because I felt like I was getting biased information and, and I am, and that's okay. Uh, that's what they do for a living. That's how they earn their income. So would survey the audience and, you know, depending on people that I trusted in that arena, um, I would sort of uh, shift and pivot, you know, my income accordingly. So for the syndication, I have, a, I have a lot of friends in the space, you know, folks like you, Eileen, that I know and trust and, and people like you that I can lean on to ask them questions before I invest in something like that. So I feel pretty confident in that space that I'm making the right decisions when the right opportunities come about the market is the market. It's always going to be that way. And quite honestly, I lean into my broker for that. I do trust him. Took up going through a few to get the right guy. It's actually a girl and she's great. And then for crypto, yeah, I'll be honest with you. It's almost like I'm in Vegas. It's just like, it's just a total guess. Sometimes it's total gut feel. I've tried to learn a lot of things. I've gotten into ICOs and IGOs and really trying to understand that space. And it's definitely a lot more volatile. It feels a lot more like gambling, but it's fun, you know? So it's, it's treated me well so far. And I do feel or have felt before in the past that I wanted to shift a lot more of my wealth into crypto because it's the adoption curve of crypto is so incredibly sharp. It's one of the fastest growing adoptions of a technology ever in the history of the world. In the early stages of that, where a very small percentage of the world is still even involved in crypto. And to see the fact that the government's already starting to crack down on things out of call it fear or spe you know that they want a piece of that pie, it, there must be something good to it. So, so that's kind of the a little bit getting inside of my head. I don't know if that really helps at all in terms of trying to understand how I make those decisions. But it's usually by committee, asking a lot of people, and then coming up and deriving my own opinion. Yeah, no, totally. Especially when you're getting all these different. It's, it's like almost in a sense, like um, information overload, right? It's like, how do you discern from all the different information and the, the bias that they have to each one of those to formulate, to get to your own personal individual goal, your own individual need. So for you, as you've been investing and putting everything into passive income, and you've also working actively, how did you determine when you reached financial independence? And then also what does financial independence look like for you? For us, and when I say us, I say my wife and I, for us, financial independence is being able to get to the point where we have enough passive income coming in, where we can go live life the way we want to live life, right? That can be you know, different for different people. But for us, something that we truly enjoy is we really enjoy traveling. In fact, one of the businesses we have is a travel agency. And so my wife runs that. And part of the reason why we do it is every time we travel, we can write it off. Uncle Sam, if you're listening, you know, we'll be in Mexico for many weeks coming working up. Really hard. Up, we're <laughs> working real hard. Yes. <laughs> so we'll be working from Mexico and you know, doing research on Mexico yep. and learning everything about Mexico for yep. our clients. And there's truth to that, but there's also, it's just a tax thing, but we love that. We love different cultures, different foods. And with a mar as a marketing agency, all my employees are remote. So I wanted to be able to get to the point where that business is in someone autopilot, I can go sit with my laptop or iPad, whatever, on the beach with some Wi-Fi signal and be able to manage the business with a different view than the view of the wall that I have right now in front of me. Because I don't ever see myself not doing something, right? I'm not, not that person that's going to be sitting on the front porch with my wine and just you know staring off into space. I have to be doing something, building something. It's just who I am. It's how I'm wired. So I want to get to the point where the money that is coming in has allowed me to do the things that I want to do. And I'm very close to that now, thankfully, at 46. 
My hope is by 50, it can be in true autopilot and you know it's completely stress-free. But knowing myself, I'll probably pick up some sort of project that'll just cause me, you know, stress and anxiety because it's at some level I, I enjoy it. It's a juice that kind of keeps you alive, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people when they think about retirement, you know, uh, they they have a different opinion of what it looks like, right? Some people think about it sitting on the beach with a drink or something like that, sitting on your front porch, you know, just having that leisurely time, you know, I think you can only handle so much of that. Right. And, and so after a little bit of time, like I think as humans, you just need to continue to grow. And as you're growing and learning new things, that's what really fuels the fire. It really keeps you, I would say like, you know, in a sense, quote unquote, young, right. And your mind active and you're interested in learning new things. And so people have a different interpretation of what retirement looks like. And when they get there, it's, it might not be exactly what they were expecting. I've seen that from my own parents, you know, that when they retired, my dad was like, oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to grow my hair out. And, you know, he was, he worked for GE corporate for many years. And after about two weeks, he's like, I'm bored. This stinks. I don't want to do this anymore. And I think also they work so hard and they're like, I'm going to be happy when I retire. Right. So they go through like so many years of like suck, right. Or the job that they don't like so that they can get to that point to where maybe they can enjoy their life. And that to me, didn't sound like a really cool plan. So I said, I'd rather do something that I like and slowly be able to get it to a point where I'm working on my own terms doing the types of things that I want to do, but I'm still working, but I'm able to do it from anywhere in the world because, you know, to me that that's living, that's retirement. That's, and to be able to do it when I'm not old and gray and I can actually enjoy it. Everything I do is to live that lifestyle and work within that lifestyle because I don't think I'll ever stop working because you're right, Eileen, it's about growth. We're going to jump in a little bit here, Derek. So you say you're 46 right now and your goal is 50. So that's say if we jump forward to that day right now, what would that day look like to you? When I hit 50, October 17th, 2026, my hope is, is to wake up that morning in some country that is not here, in some Airbnb that we've rented for a month, do a FaceTime with my kids, to check in with them to see you know how things are going, get a workout in, meditate, and then maybe do a little bit of work around something that's more philanthropic, that's more about giving back than trying to fill my pockets to be able to enjoy what I'm just describing right now. This sounds really nice, by the way. I'm glad you asked me this. (laughs) Then have a fantastic lunch with my my wife, walk on the beach, walk through the town, wherever we are, probably a nap, you know, I'll be 50. So like, I feel like napping is the thing when you get a little realistic. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Naps are amazing. You fight them as a kid, but you can't wait to take them when you're older. Right. And then probably maybe... Happy hour, four o'clock, start having a little bit of wine. The wife enjoying a meal that we've cooked together that's healthy and nutritious so that we feel great. Long walk afterwards, right? To burn that off. And then something social in the evening with friends. That sounds like a pretty awesome day at at 50. All the while, the investments and the passive income and everything is just taking care of itself on autopilot. I don't have to worry about it. And I'm paying for everything with crypto. So if you want to know, that's that's (laughs) how I'm paying for everything. (laughs) No more fiat. No more fiat, no more Swiss code, no more nothing. Yes, none of that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say they want to go to that state and they have a timeline, but they never really visualize it. So it's great that, you know, I kind of, sorry, I put you on the spot, but this is a good exercise for a lot of our audience, including ourselves to visualize that because, yeah, we keep fighting hard really, but what are we really trying to achieve? And if you visualize it, it will happen, right? It's like the book, The Secret. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I I agree. And I think you have to feel that when you're visualizing, like, you know, smell the air and the food. And that's really what I think cements it is you're right. And I don't think a lot of people have that vision or they don't have specificity to that vision. So, you know, vague goals get you vague results. So if you really know exactly what you want and what you want your day to look like, and then work backwards to construct that. My wife and I went through that very exercise when we first met each other, decided to get married. She was a dental hygienist. And I had a medical distribution company and I was like, are you happy? (laughs) And she's like, not really. I'm like, well, what do you want our day to look like? She's like, I'd rather just be able to work from anywhere in the world, travel a ton and have these businesses that just generate passive income. So we can really just, you know, kind of knock out whenever we want. And I was like, that sounds pretty good. Let's do that. And she's like, she was, you know, stuck in her job and 
I had business partners and I said, just let's, let's just the heck with it. Let's just do it. Right. So I told my business partners, I said, I love you guys, but I'm out. Um, didn't even ask for a buyout, nothing, no money. I was like, it's yours. The business is yours. That's how much I didn't like that space. And I'd stepped into, I opened a marketing firm. I had one client and then we got married and we decided we wanted to kick this journey off with a two month around the world honeymoon that we were going to completely circumvent the globe, like go all the way around. And we planned it for a year. We saved and we did it. And that began the journey of this lifestyle of being able to run a business from another country, just want both hands and feet in. And we were in Bali and Thailand and Venice and all these other places living this life, getting a taste of it. And when we got back, I was like, we'll either be broke and homeless. I was like, or we'll, we'll, we'll know this is what we want. And so then we came back and the pandemic hit. So it forced us from being going all the way around the world to being like shut in so we could focus on our businesses. It was actually somewhat of a blessing for us. And things really exploded from there. And now this year we're traveling to a number of different countries. Now that things are opening back up to be able to enjoy that lifestyle and work from different countries. In fact, Eileen is I've talked to her from Jamaica, I think once. Oh yeah. But yes, it's really like, it was non-commitmental by taking that two months off and just traveling and just getting that taste of it, seeing what a lifestyle like this would look like if you were to take that leap. If you never even tried it, you wouldn't even know if it would be the right fit for you or not. And so by, you know, just that little taste, it really really defined and helped you visualize how your future life is going to look like and what are the steps I need to do to get there and then, you know, making it happen. Yeah, it was kind of a bold move. Something that is when I went away, I actually had, I ended up having three clients when we left and then one fired me while I was gone. So, you know, cause I, I still didn't really know what I was doing as a marketing firm. We were so small. We built like two websites or something like that at this point. Yeah, now we've built like close to 500. So it's, you know, a lot has happened over that time, but man, it was scary, you know, but if you, sometimes you just need to jump and just kind of grow your wings on the way down, right. And just, just hope you land on your feet. That's what we did. So, but it gave us a real good taste and also made us realize the importance of building our businesses that will deliver you passive income, not only the investing side, but like build systems that just passively bring money to your mailbox. So that became a huge focus uh, for us was, was making that a big part of our plan so we can go enjoy these things while we're still earning. So Aline, do you, do you want to introduce uh, Derek to our, our famous lightning round? <laughs> yes. Are you ready, Derek? I am. I'm ready. I actually, I think I'm ready, but I'm not. I'm nervous. Let's do this though. <laughs> do you need a little, here, should I hand you a napkin? <laughs> I should. I just, I need a towel. <laughs> All right. So number one, if you became a billionaire tomorrow, what would your day look like? Oh, wow. I think it would look exactly like I just described earlier. I think that's how it would look. So it would be just filled with, you know, things that help me and those around me grow and really be more focused on spending time with people that I think we sacrifice when we're working so hard. Billionaire mindset already reaching <laughs> fire. In four years. <laughs> That's right. Four more years. <laughs> and then the second question will be, if we have to start all over again, which sounds like you kind of partially did two years ago before COVID hit, but if you have to start all over again with 500K this time, because this is what a lot of our high income earners audience kind of save up in their bank and they're like, they're, what should I do? Should I go into equity for stock? Should I go into crypto? Should I do real estate? Should I buy gold? Should I do this or that? But if you start all over with half a million dollar USD, what would you do right now with that money? Okay. So one, I would, I would go on a trip with, with my loved ones to decide what we're going to do with that half a million. Cause I think you need to kind of get out of your element a little bit and start to visualize. I'm a dreamer. So dream and think about what you're going to do. But for me personally, when I look at all these different investment opportunities that are out there at the, at the age that I am right now, I actually would invest it in a business that I would be involved in, to be quite honest with you. I would invest it in something that I feel I would have a little bit more control over um, because while I've done great with a lot of investments, I've lost my Self pretty good on a few investments as well. And if I'm going to look myself in the mirror, if someone's going to hand me 500K 
and to give me the best opportunity to at least when it comes down to accountability, I can look in the mirror and be like, well, you either did something good with it or, or you didn't. So I would invest it in a business that I felt was something that was at the core I loved and enjoyed. And I would try to turn that 500,000 and you know, 10, 15 X that over a period of time, have that money really start working for me. That's quite honestly what I would do with it right now. And if you were a podcast host and you could interview anybody in the world, who would you want to interview the most? I actually am a podcast host. Um, well, that's yes, a great that's question. true. That I've is true. That. <laughs> uh, I could interview anybody in the world. So I'm a huge Apple guy. So I'd actually have to say it can be, does he have to be alive? It would be Steve Jobs if we're talking about people that aren't, aren't alive. So I don't know if I answered that question correctly, but if anyone in the world, in the history of the world, I'd say Steve Jobs. Okay. So I know Alina, when we start this podcast, we have a goal. Again, we visualize and say very soon we're going to monetize this and kind of turn this into kind of like a profit business, but at the same time, an endowment as well that could start supporting a lot of local uh, charities or, or charities that we think is very important. So what are some of the charities that you would donate to where you're looking at part of your fire journey? Great question. So for me, I actually have a couple of buddies of mine who have a not-for-profit that's called Give Site Global. And it's a nonprofit. So basically what, what their business is, is they actually provide financial services and investing services to doctors. And they just work with doctors, but then they have a, a not-for-profit called Give Site Global. And what they do is they actually, they they've done some amazing stuff, but they raise money to be able to go perform eye surgery on those who blind in some of these underdeveloped countries. And it takes like, it's like a $30 surgery for, it's basically like a cataract surgery for a lot of people from babies to, you know, people that are in their nineties to be able to restore sight back to them. And it's so inexpensive and there's a in millions and millions of people that are impacted by this, that a $30 surgery could give them sight back which, you know, is such a powerful tool and a powerful thing to do for, for humanity. Um, you know, I, I love these guys. I love their passion. I love their vision. It's just a and, and Reed Lancaster, the names of the two guys that are at the helm for this. And I would give to that because I know it's going in the hands of people that I can trust. I've seen the results and I believe that they are truly on a mission to do something good there. So that, that, that would be, that's where I give now. So that's where I'd continue to. And there's Gipsite so many others. Global. Yeah. Give site global. Give site global. That's go. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, Derek, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all about you and your financial financial freedom journey. And for our listeners out there who are interested in, you know, learning more about you, where's the best place that they can go? So you can contact me at adaptmediaagency.com. And that's just, uh, that's our marketing firm. So everything marketing, it's a great way to just reach out to me, get in contact with me for, you know, whatever reason that may be. And then we have two other companies that are focused on health and wealth, and that's Adapt Wealth, which is adaptmywealth.com. It's a great community, just trying to help like-minded investors across all asset classes, just learn a little bit about all things investing uh, and get access to investment opportunities as a group. And then Adapt My Health is adaptmyhealth.com. That's just, it's another place to get in contact with me. You notice it's adapts at the beginning of every single one of these. Adapt My Health is all about helping people challenge the way they approach their health in a natural way. So a natural approach to health and wellness and really trying to get people back to the way we're designed as human beings to be healthy. So those are some great spaces to get in contact with me. And I would love to hear from anybody. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Derek. No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Pleasure talking with you. you. Share a lot of fire ideas in terms of investment, in terms of active income, in terms of charities that you really look up to. And um, it's truly honored to have you on the show. And uh, it's nice to meet you again. I'm sure a lot of audience found great values out of it. Thank you so much again for having me on. I really appreciate it. All the links mentioned in this episode are included in the show notes. And if you love this episode, please leave us a rating and review on Apple iTunes. The link is also included in the show notes. And we would really appreciate your help in spreading the word to more high income earners on how they too can maximize both their time and money. Also, if you still haven't joined our high income earners Facebook group, you are missing out on high income earners community where we help each other reach our own version of FIRE.